السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد I'm a little relaxed today Mufti Masood is going to take my part inshallah to leave so I'm a little more comfortable today I don't have to stress out I don't know if that's good news for you <laughs> uh, we'll just go over a few things a few, a few methods of the Prophet Wasallam. method number one and it's actually quite important and I hope everybody's listening to what I'm saying <clears throat> especially within Madaris it's a very common culture we have and I see it's also a, cult, a common, cult, common way of speaking in other cultures as well but when it comes to using this way of speaking, it is something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do just haphazardly, you know, just every single time. And what I'm speaking about is that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to emphasize something, and he wanted us to really pay attention to something, he would swear on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a Muslim, we know we can only swear on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Swearing on anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolutely forbidden. You cannot even swear on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can only swear on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But swearing, and I don't mean cursing, but using swearing on the name of Allah. Number one, when you, when you swear on the name of Allah, you shake Allah's throne. So meaning, it, the idea behind that is that it's supposed to only be used on great things. And only supposed to be used on for serious issues. Unfortunately, nowadays we live in a time where every time somebody wants to say something, Wallahi, Tallahi, Billahi, Wallahi, brother, Wallahi, Akhi. <laughs> Subhanallah, that is not how that word is supposed to be utilized. We don't speak like that. It is narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, swore on the name of Allah on different occasions more than 80 times. Now, the reason I'm narrating that is because I want us to understand something. In his lifetime, they're saying more than 80 times. That's it. I know people who swear more than 80 times in a week. That's not how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to utilize the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to swear on three occasions. But they were large, they were grand occasions. Occasions like... They deny resurrection. So you tell them, swear them, swear to them on the name of Allah. That is the truth. And on two other occasions, Rasulullah sallallahu was commanded by Allah as well to swear on his name. Now, uh, I don't. I, well, I guess I can mention one hadith, and that hadith is in which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Walladhi nafsi biyadi," and whose I swear, and whose hands is my life. So now he's trying to get our attention. Hopefully, everybody's paying attention. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, I swear by the being in whose hand is my life. You cannot enter Jannah until you believe. Okay, that part we all understand. Then he says, but you cannot believe until you love one another. So Iman, complete Iman is when? When we have muhabbat between each other. We have love between each other. We don't have grudges amongst ourselves. Life is too short to hate someone. Life is too short to have a grudge against someone. I'm telling you, they're all small in the, at, at the end of the day. Illa mashallah, sometimes some things are grand and they're big, but most of the time they're petty arguments. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, you cannot enter Jannah until you believe, but you cannot believe until you love one another. And he says, should I tell you something that will create love amongst yourselves? Of course, why not? He said, Make salam am amongst yourselves. Meaning, it shouldn't be that you only say salam to people you recognize. As a matter of fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, near the end of time, what's going to happen is that people are only going to say salam to people they know. You could walk by, it could be 10 people there, you just walk by, no, I'm not going to say salam to them, I don't know who they are. That is not how we are. 
in order to create muhabbat amongst ourselves, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Afshu salam abaynakum. Spread salam amongst yourselves. So I like to make, I like it that we all say salam to each other no matter whether I know the person's name, no person, don't know their name, whether they're from this community, not from this community. We should always be saying salam amongst ourselves. That will be a means of creating muhabbat amongst ourselves. Of course, we're making dua for the individual. You make dua for the individual. And then inshallah that will strengthen our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing that I want to talk about, that I'm not going to go into detail because we mentioned it before, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to talk about something important, what did he do? We mentioned it before. He used to repeat the statements three times. Repeat it. Now three isn't mandatory, but three was for clarity, to, to emphasize it. So he would repeat a statement. And we talked about it way in the beginning of Ramadan, how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated a statement three times. So similar, there are many narrations and not going into the detail, but this was a habit of the Prophet sallallahu to repeat a statement. Another habit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that when he was talking about something, let's say he was having a normal conversation, and then he wanted to talk about something important in the middle or he wanted to highlight it. He wanted to highlight it. So let's say on one occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was leaning and he was just talking about, you know, can I, should I... He says the statement was, should I inform you of the greatest sin? You know, just imagine Rasulullah was leaning. And he says, I don't have something to lean on, you know, but I would lean. So Rasulullah was leaning. He says, should I inform you of the greatest sin? And then he repeated that statement three times, actually. Should I inform you of the greatest sin? So Rasulullah said, the greatest sin is to associate partners with Allah and for every child to disrespect your parents. The greatest sins in the eyes of Allah is to associate partners and to disrespect your parents. Don't disrespect your parents. But on this specific occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to emphasize something very important. So he was leading as he said this, he was saying it, Allah says it in Quran as well. And then he gets up. This is what I'm talking about. You know, somebody just changes their posture. Like a teacher in class, he's relaxed and all of a sudden he gets serious. You're paying attention now. So Rasulullah sallallahu would change his posture, he would get up, he would sit like this, and he would say, and in this, in this occasion, he said a false testimony. A false testimony. So, what was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa trying to say? He's trying to say that a false testimony, now it isn't as great of a sin as shirk and disrespect of your parents, but it is extremely, extremely bad. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa got up and to, to try to explain it. And the reason being is because it's, it's common. It becomes common. Lying, saying false testimony becomes common. <coughs> when you don't, you're a Muslim, you don't necessarily always associate partners with Allah. You, you don't, well, you don't, of course. I wouldn't say always, you never. Let me correct my statement. But okay, disrespect of your parents, maybe you're not always around your parents. But false testimony, lying, that becomes very common. And today you see it all the time. Fake news. Everything is fake down. We don't even know anymore, right? False testimony. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was trying to emphasize to us, be very, very careful when you're testifying, when you're giving a witness, or, or when you're just speaking about something, that something happened or something didn't happen, that you don't lie, that it becomes common. There's another narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that takes an act that is more severe. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it's worse than that act. Not by one-to-one -one comparison, but the end result. So just for the sake of understanding, another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, al ghibatu ashaddu min zina Now zina is a very vile act in Islam. We all know this. Zina is a very vile act. But in this occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, backbiting is worse than zina. One-to-one, -one, no. But unfortunately, we always people always find time to talk about other people. So it just becomes so common. It's the normal dinner talk. It's the normal talk when we're just hanging out. When friends are sitting together, it's the normal conversation. Oh, did you know this? Oh, so and so that. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to emphasize something to us, that although one-to-one -one comparison, they are not equal, but when one becomes more common, then it, it leads to such a rank that it, goes, it becomes even more vile. Then zira in this occasion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Ameen.